everyone. Welcome to our laboratory practical session at Springfield College of Healthcare Brampton. Today in this series, we are going to talk about the tubes, phlebotomy tubes, various additives present in those tubes, and what are the uses of those tubes. As we know, different setup, different uh, healthcare setups may be requiring diverse type of tubes. But here we are going to focus upon those tubes which we are using in the daily practices, whether you are working in the medical offices, hospitals, nursing homes, these are the mostly commonly used tubes. So here I am going to show you one after another different tubes and what they contain. So first I am going to show you as per the order of draw, number one tube which we use is the light blue tube which is having a sodium citrate as an additive. So this is the tube which is having a you can see a small like a drop water drop. This is sodium citrate as an additive. On the tube you would be able to see the mark until what level we need to fill up the tube. The good part of all the tubes is there is never overfilling. But if you don't take care properly then it would be underfilling. So if it is underfilling and the tube is having additive in that, your results may be changed. So always be careful to fill the tube up to the marked level. So first tube as per the order of draw when especially when you are going for the multiple tube collection first is the light blue tube which is sodium citrate tube. We use this tube for INR mainly then we use for the BT CT, PT, PTT, all like uh, we can say for the clotting studies. So this is the most commonly used even for the fibrogen D-timer test. So those tests also can be performed with this one. This is the first tube in a series for the multi-draw. If you are not going for the blood culture, remember if you are going for the blood culture as, at all, first you are going to collect the blood culture and then this one but without blood culture this is the first tube. Second tube we are going to discuss about the gold top tube. This is a gold top tube. Here you see the gel at the bottom. So this tube is having a gel which doesn't move so this gold top tube, which is also known as SST tube, serum separator tube. Serum separator tube we use for mainly for the blood chemistry, like for blood urea, uric acid, ammonia, different tests we can perform with gold top tube, which is one of the commonest tube in our practice. So this is the gold top tube. Then similar type of tube I am going to show you is the red top tube. When we talk about the red top tube, these are the different company. So you can see little bit change variation in the color but these are all like the red tubes. Red tube can be with additive or without additive. So here, if you look at this, this is with the additive. So there is a small droplet type of uh, uh, picture you can see in this one. So this is with additive. Another is, this one is a non-additive tube. So typically the non-additive tube is a glass tube 
and the additive one is the plastic tube. So, but there is no additive, it is always written, no additive. Okay, so here you can see that one. This is also known as the serum tube. So, red tube with or without additive is the serum tube. Serum tube we use for the toxicology, serology or for the uh, similarly like we use for the immunopathological studies like patient is suffering from common cold or hepatitis we can use this tube. So that was about the red top tube. Then the, after red tube we have different varieties of the tube. There are a number of tubes which we may or may not be using the our practices. So another tube I'm going to show you green top tube. Here you see the green top tube. Easy to remember green heparin. Green tube maybe with the different type of little bit change in the color light tube light color uh, sorry light green or a dark green with or without gel at the bottom but green for heparin we can easily remember and this tube is for the again for the chemistry we can use like the for the quick result in the toxicology somebody consumed poison we can immediately uh, want a result we can use this tube so this is green heparin tube then we have other tubes we can see like the royal blue tube this tube here you can see these are used for the trace elements so sometimes the metal toxicology can somebody consumed even the metals like the mercury poisoning or um, uh, lead poisoning we can use this tube same way here you can see the mark until what level we are going to fill this tube after that we have the other tubes which are the EDTA tubes. So EDTA have all different types of tubes which can we, uh, we can see in the EDTA. One is the pink top tube. Another I'm going to show you is the most commonly which we call is the magenta tube or a purple tube. Also known as the lavender tube. Both are EDTA tube. One more tube, tube I am going to show you which looks like the royal, royal blue but that also contain EDTA. So these are the EDTA tubes. Pink top tube we commonly use for the viral load testing. So to know exactly how much HIV is there in the blood we may use this tube. Remember this is also EDTA tube. Lavender tube or a purple tube or a magenta EDTA tube. This one is also another EDTA tube. Looks like a royal blue tube, but this is like a K3 EDTA. And this EDTA tubes, one of the common tube where we use it uh, for commonly for the CBC, like the uh, complete blood count, HB, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and ESR also. We have different tubes for the ESR also, black top and different others, but most commonly we use this EDTF tube for that purpose. Now the, this is, this, the EDTA tube is generally last but one in our multi draw series. So last tube we are coming to is sodium fluoride tube. So here you can see this is the sodium fluoride tube. 
there is a little bit of powder type of thing you can see if you can see here so this is the gray top dew this is the gray top dew this we commonly use for the diabetes alcohol level endocrine metabolic disorders so this is the last dew which we use for the collection so that's it like these are the most commonly tubes if you remember this tube it would be really helpful in your daily practice one more thing i would like to tell you that if we if you have a little confusion about the tubes and how it will go you can always verify with the order of drop given by the uh, life lab or whatever lab you are working with so you can have a look out here so this is the current order of draw given by the life lab so you can verify with this how many time you are going to uh, how much amount you are going to collect how many times you are going to do the inversion of the tubes once the collection is completed so this uh, chart would be helpful to you so if you have any doubt you can always verify this thing so once you have collected the tubes remember to invert the tube now a small discussion about whether to invert or not so always check with the tube whether the tube is having additive or not if the tube is having additive again verify number of inversion inversion will go with this way you can invert like this or like this okay so like this so whichever way either you can hold it like this and you can do or like this you can do it but never shake it like this if you shake the tube this will cause hemolysis and your change or to results so these are the important part related with the tubes thank you have a great day